like, oh, good. So I'm humbled as usual that we get to connect with such special guests every brew talk. This is Nicole Kali here, Black Authors United, and Chelsea Dawn joins us today as Buddy Miles' literary manager and his dear stepdaughter. Hi, how are you? Hi, Chelsea. Oh, it's good to see you. Everyone's excited to see you. How has life been? Them changes. It's a lot of changes always, you know, and that's how life goes. A lot of growth. Beat stage three metastatic breast cancer. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks. Good, good. Wow. Just dealing with that and um, building Buddy's legacy. At the same time. Yes. The power that that takes. Strength it actually gives me strength to get through it because the fight, you know, life is a fight sure. and uh, we're still fighting. We're still pushing that boundaries and making sure that the voice is heard. Yes, yes. So y'all, Chelsea is a survivor and multiple fronts from cancer and just life in general, like you said, because it's a journey and it's not easy for, for any of us. There's always going to be those, those rough patches, but I see that you're here and you're beautiful, honey. You're kicking. Thanks. Good for you. you was, you're beautiful. It's very <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, too. This is an amazing brew talk already. I can tell that you're a very multifaceted and talented woman. When did you first start to learn about music overall and then Buddy's music? My mother, we're from Texas, and growing up, my mother actually was good friends with Steve Ray Vaughan. So the music history is there. The love of music is there. Mm -hmm. And funny story, I joined the military at 17, and that's when she hooked up with Buddy. <laughs> so when I got out, I got to be a tour manager, and I thought that was really cool. That is fantastic. I wow. thought that was the ultimate, to be able to travel and be on a tour bus, which a lot of people don't get to experience, was a huge blessing. I got to experience that, and it, it humbled me because it is – when a musician goes on stage, they give you everything. They do. Everything they have, because that's what they are. And so it was really neat to see that and to see his influence on people and crossing boundaries and generations. And his music is timeless. Yeah. I love that. I would love to hear what tour manager for the Buddy Miles Express must have been like. That must have rocked, Chelsea. It was cool. It was cool. Just getting out of the military and being a medic helped me because... When you're in a club scenario, after a few drinks, people kind of forget that you're a human being or that they are a human being at the end of the day. So I put a couple of people up against the wall for security and, <laughs> you know, just kind of being there to help protect. And that's how I feel today. I'm still protecting. It's a nice thing, um, but I was never, we were never rude or arrogant, but he always liked to interact with his fans. He kept every show intimate. He could take a crowd of 100,000 and make you feel like you're sitting right next to him. So that was kind of neat. That's really neat. What other insights and special glimpses did you get while you were a tour manager for Buddy? His compassion. A lot of people have that ego, and he did. But you've got to understand, he's been touring since he was nine years old and playing musically professionally from a dad who nurtured that mm -hmm. and a family who accepted that because he left home at 15 with his own drum kit and went on tour by mom and dad. I'm 15 years old and I'm gone. And he was born in 1947. Insane. To be out on your own. And he was Blackfoot Indian and Haitian. I did not know that. He's indigenous American. He's mm -hmm. from the Caribbean as well. Yes, ma'am. He is actually a descendant of Blackfoot Indian princess and a Haitian businessman fell in love and negotiated for his bride back then. And that's how the family started in their first black owned mortuary in Atchison, Kansas. And it's a huge, I mean, there's more than just buddy in this story. He comes from great strength. Mm -hmm. And in that strength, he gave his musical ability. That's pretty darn cool. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if a lot of people appreciate that aspect of him, and that's what I want to show. That's because I'm Afro-Indigenous as well. I'm passionate about that ancestry because I've been talking to fellow brew admins and people throughout my life. It's African, but it's not just that. Many of us are Afro-Indigenous as well, so we're mixing those ancestries and really speaking to power, you know, when we play music because it's the songs of our people and the exactly. tribes that we're from. Yeah. I'm very spiritual, and it's a universal sound of love and for too long it's been denied and um yes uh, spiritual level 
You know, I'm, I'm Cherokee, French, and German. On some level, I always had a connection with the universe. To me, I always accept the individual. There are bad people in everywhere. I mean, not to even specify anything. It's just there's bad and good people. And on a soulful level, you got to find the good people. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do is reach out there and say there's still love and, and goodness out there. There's still love. Because all the buddies' songs are about that. There Stand are. People. We've got to live together. Them changes. I'm going through them changes. My mind is, it's always continual growth. He had much love. He had much friendship. The song that he sang by Charlie Carp, that was, I still love you anyway. He sings that. Your heart breaks because it's like, I love you, but I know you're pushing me away. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think Buddy felt that on every level. Yeah. I think he was really dealing with growing into his identity and understanding that a lot of people weren't going to accept him as he was, not just because he was Native American and African American, but because he was artistic and because he was making new genres and breaking new ground in many ways. People weren't going to make it easy for him, but exactly. he found a way to love, and he found a way to play. And that's so exactly. important. That's relevant. He shined through it all. Yeah. <laughs> it's unreal. He played drums by nine years old, and he contributed musically with his father in the jazz bebops, right? He recorded, but there is no actual any more recordings from can really find because they cut his his part out. Little note, when he was on tour with Wilson Pickett, he was around when Mustang Sally was written. We just can't prove if he had anything to participate. So, just, I mean, it's all like like this. It's the history so of music lame. where Buddy was, Buddy was involved in everybody and everything, and it was a great big happiness. Over the decades, I know that some of it's been put in the shadows, but his music stands, and it's, yeah. it's there for us to love. Yeah. His music, once you know that it's him, it's him. You can't really take the influence of Buddy out of his music. Exactly. It's organically flowing conversation, I will say. Like too. And I'm right. so proud that you get to share this history and this ongoing musical knowledge. Now he's never really going to leave us. There's always the songs and there's always the artistry that he has shared with us over the years. So Buddy's long background of groove led him to Soul Star, Wilson Ticket, like you said, and guitarist Mike Bloomfield. And that the Monterey Pop Festival was where there was a stage for unfiltered performance and an incredible confluence between Jimi Hendrix and Buddy Miles. Can we hear about that origin story? Well, the interesting part of that was the Electric Flag were the headliners for their day. And Jimi Hendrix was another day. So that just shows that they were all friends in the same circuit. The Electric Flag that was their first huge performance, which is why Michael's so nervous. And then when the group got in there with Eric Burden and Jimi Hendrix the next day, they were just hanging out. And that's just what he liked to do. After he performed and gave his all, he was there, you know, to hang out with his, his group, his people, because no one really understands. Once you've hit that level, how easy is it to go home? Right on, Chelsea. How easy to go to the grocery store? That's why I think that group is so special to us. They were so young the time period and then their natural ability to just I mean what's the word for that yeah I think about that all the time there's no word for innovation that we have from these musicians meeting each other just it's it's just supersonic <laughs> and they're enjoying each other they're just relaxed I mean I was looking yeah. at pictures since it was one of the questions my body language alone you can tell jimmy's relaxed and but he's having a good time whether he's on the drums or he's up front singing it was natural and that's one of the reasons jimmy wanted buddy was for his voice yeah. so just left that out there but yeah it's 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 incredible because they were friends they were friends for about a decade before yeah. the band of gypsies they were friends for the entire time jimmy was only famous for four of those but he was also on tour for a few of those before that's where they actually met Oh my God. So they supported each other, Buddy having experience already being touring and being appreciated, being, being engaged and being told, yes, 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 you can do this. Or Jimmy didn't quite have that. And so the two of them being natural friends, they leaned on each other for that. Yeah. And I believe that's why they were so successful, even in the face of so much oppression. Even today, their music stands and it shouts loud and clear as we turn up those volume because we're the ones making it shout now. 
crank it up. That's yeah. right. Crank, crank it, it up for Buddy. That's <laughs> right. Flag Santana. Yeah, we even got the California raisins. <laughs> there you go, California raisins. All of that, right? Well, NWA can thank the California Raisins because Brian Turner used the money for Priority Records from the sales of California Raisins from their re release of him. Yeah. And that mainstream rap basically got NWA started, went on from there. Wow. Like, Little story, Buddy's voice. The ripple effect, Buddy Miles through music. How does it feel to see, to document it as his literary manager? It must be astounding. <laughs> It's overwhelming sometimes, I'll be honest. It, it's, I've hit my knees a few times going, you did this and why is there more? Do you wanna share more about that? Why, why it, I, I guess it particularly hurts you and not really have his legacy be fully recognized the way that it should? Because he gave so much and it's incredible how the music industry and the entertainment industry can dictate what happens when someone's life. And we're seeing that hindsight's 2020, and let's just say this year has shown a lot. In fact, it's yeah. his story's almost there, but you're talking about someone who would jump into a studio at any given time, and I still have the, hey, I have got this tape. <laughs> <laughs> That's still gonna happen, but where he was and whom he was during those times of, of influence, oh, because yeah. Comparing Buddy Miles to Jimi Hendrix or Santana's Apples and Oranges. Yeah. yeah. They work together, not apart. Yeah. And a lot of people like to divide and we like to unite. Oh yeah. Across Brew Talks, Chelsea, we've been speaking about how in the entertainment industry, and thank you so much for sharing that because I know that it's difficult. I respect that. Definitely true. That's a whole nother podcast. Royalties. <laughs> yes. I see? Touching somewhat on royalties though. In the industry, if you are Black especially, and if you are influential in your genre, they will pitch you against the people that are also influential because there's only so much room for one yeah. of you, or three of yeah. you, right? Exactly. So in that era where there was at least 10 different influential Black artists, yeah. and that's where Buddy's music, I would say, is in a lot of the imprint that he is left upon music was cast aside, like undeniable. you said. Yes, exactly. It's undeniable and you you can hear it and go, bing, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only thing is they try the years of non-exposure because a lot of people say, if you're not touring, you're not famous. And that's not true about the originals. It's not true. That's not true. It's just not true at all. You've essentially taken from them. No matter what, at the end of the day, their, their influence is there. Wonderful. And in today's time, Unfortunately, a lot of people want to be the next greatest thing. But in a world of auto-tune, can there be another great thing? All these gentlemen did it before all this technology and social media. If you ever look at one of their tours, <laughs> they're going from here to here to here. They were never set up for great success, yeah. only confusion. I'm glad to see that at least that has been alleviated and everyone's on the same playing field and maybe future musicians can be not as, dare I say it, the, the mental illness that they endured, having to be at the mercy of someone else in the name of their creative soul. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. Yeah. Jimmy already had bipolar disorder before he became a, a mainstream musician and then the industry further compounded on him already going through that. But he was already depressed from what I understand. He was diagnosed in 2008 that he was bipolar as well. He was bipolar as well. And a lot of that can be due to long-term drug use. Mm -hmm. As we know, back then you needed to wake up, you needed to go to sleep. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's like... I get it. But their music never suffered. I get it, you know? I mean, that's what's incredible, is no matter what they were put through, no matter what strenuous tour they were put under, degradation, I mean, there's some things, you know, maybe later on it'll be told. They had so much to overcome, but their music still spoke of so much love. It's incredible.
It did. I listened to the song Manic Depression because I think that's when I started realizing that I had depression. And when I heard Them Changes by Buddy Miles, this is the blues, you know, they got each other's struggles and they helped each other through them, you know, and that's really beautiful. That's one of the ways that music is therapy. Exactly. Oh, man, it's heavy. Sometimes it's heavy. Yeah. But that's, you know, why we're here. Yeah. I'm here for, I'm here for it all, you know, because to only take the parts that are joyful and the, the happy sunshine of, of musicians is to not really give them the full panorama of their life, you know? Exactly. It's not realistic. It's, it, it can't be realistic. If we don't realize that part, then how we can we appreciate them? Yeah, and the joy that they brought to the world because to, to bring that joy in the face of, like you said, that pain, I mean, that's just, that's revolutionary to me. That is why their music is still here and we still have to pay homage to it. As the years go by and a lot of people kind of lose that connection to the history, I think the timeline should definitely honor and reflect what the pioneers like Buddy have gone through. Love and laughter and then get ready because next year we're having a party. We are having a party, Chelsea. Yes, artistic support and maintaining community are recurring over our brew talks and beautiful legacies like Buddy Miles, Girl Like So. What do you think about that? I love you. <laughs> I love you too. I do. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, All right. Yeah, you matter and Buddy matters. This yeah. music, I couldn't imagine the world without it. <laughs> I listened to it and it, when I was going through radiation, actually the um, doctor would put on Buddy and I heard all different kinds, you know, and it kind of helped get me through it. Cause he is, that's when, you know, you're laying there and you're listening to it and you're focused on it. You can feel it. And his words are so enlightening rather than dragging you down. It was amazing. It was mir It was miraculous. Your stepfather saved your life. Yes, he did. I guess that's why I'm so emotional. He saved you. His music healed you in the time that you, you really needed it, yeah. Exactly. Just to hear it before was one thing, but then to go through that, that experience and to have him kind of holding your hand. Yep. That's your thing. My mother, um, after Buddy passed in 2008, my mother passed away from a heartbreak in 2013. She's in the closet too, but <laughs> um, so it was difficult to go through it without either of them. And so it was really helpful that he left the gift of his music. And that's what it is. It's healing. Yeah. I think a generation can heal if they just let themselves heal, too. Because yeah. we're all in this together. We are, Chelsea. We really are. You have to be open to the healing and you have to be open to the messages of the music. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the album Message to the People? I haven't, actually. Check it out. I will. He did not do the artwork, but the artwork is very pertinent. It's emotionally moving. You're going to look at it and go, back then, they were talking about it. They were showing it in their physical work, mm -hmm. in their messages, because literally message to the people was Buddy telling the people, come on. Come on, let's go. Yeah. And he's draped in an American flag, and the American flag's burning, and there's nothing but souls in it. Wow. Check it out. I will. I will. Going through his music last night, and I, I feel like I saw a glimpse of it, but I didn't get to quite appreciated in the way that you just described, in which he's trying to really reach out to us and connect to us on that level and catalyze the people. Yeah. Mind, heart, body, and soul. Mm. That was Betty. Yes. How has he affected your perspective on art thus far? To be honest, he eyes wide open. When I came out of the military, uh, I was 21, three days before my 21st birthday, and I walked into being road manager and got an offer for Playboy. And instead of being like, woo, here I go, I was like, oh, hell no. No, I don't want that attention. Yeah. I read contracts for a living. I don't yeah. like being on camera, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> the attention is, the attention's weird. It's weird. Um, <laughs> I've had people hit their knees, and I'm like, please get up. <laughs> Oh well, you know, hold my hand, stand beside me, don't yeah, worship, yeah. you know, it's, okay, it, I, I was it. on stage, <laughs> yeah. but his, it's that yeah. influence that made me realize this is something to be taken seriously, appreciated, and handled with loving care. My team and I, including the family, 
are doing this with absolute truth and his story. And hopefully, you know, I know some time has passed, but it does take time to sometimes muddle through and get to the truth, the root of it. That's what's coming next. And, and it's a powerful message because that's what Buddy was. He was power. Yes, he was. Yeah. He was peace and power, so. Isn't that interesting? And, yeah, he yeah. was six foot four. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's definitely something to be forever inspired by, Chelsea. That's yeah. right. On a diasporic level, Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us for this brew talk. It's been amazing. Do you have anything else to share with us? I'm, um, nope. I got to keep some secrets to myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I, it was a great pleasure and I hope that you and I continue talking off camera and this has been amazing and I truly appreciate you. Absolutely. I appreciate you too, Chelsea. Never give up. Never stop being that beautiful spirit. That's right. A little spicy thing. <laughs> there you go. Texas pepper, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chelsea. Well, closing out and tribute to beloved Buddy Miles. Thank you. I was going to let him say goodbye. Bye. Thank we you. cherish him very much. Thank you for everything. He made the world a better place, and he still did. Yes, he did. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Chelsea. I love you, too. Have a great day. Hope Bye. your day is beautiful. I hope you have a great day, too, and enjoy the celebration tomorrow, okay? You will. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Stay in touch. <laughs>